Hi, it's Warren. Since Josh is forcing me to make a video for his channel, I thought it would be good for me to talk about some useful advices I've received from uh, family, uh, alumni, uh, other people now still in college, uh, and counselors about advices of how one should cope with college. Because I think there's a lot of anxiety around and a lot of advices aren't really useful as one can imagine since they're sort of common sense things that one can already think about by, by oneself and doesn't need to ask anyone else. But I found a few tips that were actually useful to me. So I guess I'll just start. The first advice is related to the social anxiety that you get when you go into college. Right? There are so many people, so many new people, people you haven't met, uh, you don't know anything about them, and you don't know how to make friends, you're desperate to make friends, but you're afraid that um, people won't like you, etc, etc. And I felt this myself, and one tip that really helped me was, I think someone said it on Quora, which is, well, be sociable in college, but what you want to be is not to change yourself, to conform to other people's expectation of quote unquote maybe the most sociable person or the, the best friend, the person you want to hang out with the most, but rather try to be yourself in a sociable way because there's, let's say in Harvard, there's 1,500 1, people. You're not going to be friends with every single one of them and you don't need to. What you need is to have maybe 10 or 20 people who who have similar interests with you, who are similar to you, that you can hang out with, talk with, uh, uh, make friends with. And in this sense then, it's actually a really bad strategy to try to change yourself, uh, to conform to what you think other people would enjoy, but rather try to present yourself and present your own interests in, in a sociable way to others, to let people with similar interests come over to you would be the best strategy. Because in this sense, you'll actually find people who who you love hanging out with and who love hanging out with you because of your interest and because of your natural ability, rather than sort of the mask that you put on put on just for just for making friends. Because it, it's fine if you put on the mask for one week, two weeks, even a month, two months. But when when you go on to four years of the college journey, it'll be impossible to to present yourself as someone who, who you're not and you'll feel like a complete fraud. So it, the best way to make friends, in fact, is to be authentic in a sociable way. So don't be don't be a pain and, and sort of just uh, get angry at every, everyone, uh, not being kind, etc. But also don't try to conform to everyone's expectations or your expectations of what other people's expectations of who you are are to be. In that sense, it, it's the best solution to making friends. The second advice I received, which is really interesting, I got this from a Harvard professor, was that you should try to approach your professors and also try to do, try to take really small classes where you can have build an intimate connection with your professors. And even in larger classes, try to go to office hours. First, professors will be happy if you are well prepared when you approach them so that they know that you actually know the stuff and you have genuine questions to ask them. Though it's, they'll find it really quite impressive. And second, on a more utilitarian front, uh, because of grade inflation, for example, in Harvard, uh, the average grade, I think, is A minus, and the, and the mode grade is A. Uh, how you distinguish yourself from other people is not through just the GPA, but through letters of recommendation. And the only way that you're going to get real good letters of recommendation is if you build a close connection with your professors. So small seminar classes where you can interact with the professors is a really good way. Another way is to, to go to office hours. And in this sense then, it may not be a really good idea actually to take more courses than you can manage or to take the maximum courses you can manage. Because what you want to do is to do really well on the courses that you have in order for you to to, to dis display your skills to the maximum manner to people who's going to uh, write letters of recommendations to you. And I think that also helped quench some of my anxiety around course selection, about how many courses I need to do, about where I need to just take the maximum amount of credit. And I realized that that's not really necessary, but rather what's necessary is to do well and to show 
yourself to the best of your ability in every single one of your courses and build intimate connections with your classmates and your professors in those courses in order to get the most out of each of them rather than trying to spread your time and energy on a lot of different courses and end up doing not so well in any of them. A thing about I heard was also from the, the same Harvard professor and what he said was that you need to make a certain mindset shift approach going from high school to college where from high school to college I mean, this thing where you're trying to get the scores, where, you, where you're trying to get the scores, the grades for, trying to go to college. And a lot of people, especially when you're going to real good colleges, as people, students in those good colleges are normally uh, the winners in a system where of, of grades and GPA and activities. And they, they, they might carry this mindset into college where I just want to get the most activity and to treat it as something pretty professional, uh, a stepping stone to me getting a good career rather than a great opportunity in and of itself. And just making this mindset shift of First, studying things that are utilitarian, of course, so so you can actually get a job and make some contribution to society. But also, after making this mindset shift, being able to go on to explore different things that you maybe haven't haven't done before, to go out of your comfort zone uh, and and to run the risk of failure in order for yourself to grow, is something really important because a high school environment doesn't really allow you to take risks in the same way as college. Because in high school, if you take one risk, your GPA goes down. You go into a bad college, and college well, employees don't care about your GPA as much as your ability and how much you've grown in the process. And in this way, you should think about college as not getting the credentials necessarily, but trying to build your ability and to make yourself the best person you can be by exploring and trying out things that you haven't done rather than being just safe. And a corollary to this third piece of advice was also from the Harvard professor. He said he always recommends students to take a gap year. And I think even if we don't necessarily want to take a gap year, we can try to think about things we can do to, to go into the gap year mindset. What the Harvard professor said to me was that, well, what, what he observed is people who take a gap year, they become much more appreciative of the opportunities that a college or a university has to offer. So, and then they treat it more as an opportunity, as I said in the third advice, than it's something that they just, they just have to slog through. Like the same thing in high school, like a stepping stone to my professional career and just a complete useless, something that I don't want to engage in. Uh, because a Harvard professor himself, I've gone to Harvard, I graduated and went to acupuncture for three years, and then he realized that, well, the opportunities inside college are actually so much better than what one can find outside. And he decided to go back to graduate school. And when he got back, he realized how wonderful the college experience is. And also, it spurs him on to take up uh, most of the opportunities that were offered to him and be very grateful for it, rather than treating it as something just to be done as a chore. The last advice, which I find pretty interesting, is to try to establish a schedule and practice sticking to a schedule in the summer before you get into college. Since what you want to do in college is to have a certain disciplinary structure for yourself to follow in order for you to not be overwhelmed by all, all the possibilities and also responsibilities given to you in college. And I read a post from someone who was extremely successful in college and he graduated from New Chicago in two and a half years with a double major. And what he said was he treated college as a full-time job. He, he would have this really strict schedule and everyone knows when he actually wakes up, when he sleeps, when he's, what he's doing every single hour in order for him to maximize all the opportunities offered in college. And I think this is part of the gratitude uh, that we're trying to cultivate before we go to college in order to make the most out of the opportunities. And it's kind of a sacrifice that I think is necessary to make so that we, the, the purpose of the schedule is not necessarily to limit ourselves, but to enable ourselves to make the most of all the opportunities that college has to offer. Thanks.